Well, hello everyone. Glad you could join us again for another lesson for uh, this week of Awana. And uh, pretty excited. We're getting ready to go into some uh, holiday times in just two weeks. It is going to be Thanksgiving, and so it's coming very quickly. And so we are going to be having our lesson tonight, then one more next week, and then we're going to take a week off for Thanksgiving. But as I was thinking about Thanksgiving coming up, uh, this is always a time for us to start thinking about all the wonderful things that we are truly thankful for. The reality is we should be thankful all of the time. In fact, there are so many places in scripture where God directs us to be thankful and have a heart of thankfulness. And we see throughout the Psalms where we're to enter his gates with thanksgiving. When, we, when we're praying, we're supposed to start out with prayers of thanksgiving. And so, so many things directing us to that. And tonight, we are going to be taking a look at a passage in Psalms that is all about thanksgiving. And it's different reasons why we should be thankful to God for the things that he has done for us. So before we get into that, let's bow our heads and we're going to pray and then we'll jump right into it. So let's pray. Lord, thank you that we can take this time, uh, even if it is through a video, uh, we can still take time to listen and learn from your word. So help us to do that. Help us to be able to pay attention. Help us to understand it and help us to know how we can apply it in our lives. In Jesus name. Amen. All right. Well, tonight, like I said, we're going to be looking at a passage in Psalms. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them up to Psalm chapter 136. 136. A lot of you have already learned uh, where that's at in your Bibles because you've been saying the books of the Old Testament. You also have learned that Psalm is the longest book, meaning it has the most chapters 150 chapters. Well, we're going to be close to that in chapter 136 tonight. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about this particular chapter. It's not too long. It's about 26 verses. But what would happen a lot of time with these psalms is they would use them in their church services uh, back then when they would get together and when the priests would read scripture, read God's word to the people. And every now and then you come across one like this where it is supposed to be a response. And here's what I mean by that. So every verse in this starts out with a statement. And then the people would tend to respond with another statement. And so in every verse, there is a response from the people that would have been in the service that says, for his mercy endures forever. And so here's how we're going to read it. We're going to do it a little bit different. You're obviously sitting in your homes watching this on YouTube or on the TV or the computer or even a phone. But here's what I'm going to have you do. I will read the first part of the verse. So in verse one, it starts out and it says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And then you're going to be part of the church congregation and you're going to respond back with, for his mercy endures forever. And don't be afraid to say it out loud. Just go ahead and say it out loud right where you're at. And you're watching it. And, uh, and we're going to do this for all 26 verses. I'll read the first part of the verse and I'll point to you. And you respond with, for his mercy endures forever. We're going to do all 26 verses right now. And then we're going to go back to the beginning and kind of work through it. So we can see that in these 26 verses, there's really four categories, four main things that God says we are to give thanks to him for. And we're going to see that. Are you guys ready? Don't forget, your part is... For his mercy endures forever. Here we go. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. To him who alone does great wonders. 
through him, by wisdom, made the heavens. To him who laid out the earth above the waters. To him who made the great lights. The sun to rule by day. The moon and the stars to rule by night. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn. And brought out Israel from among them. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm. To him who divided the Red Sea in two. And made Israel pass through the midst of it. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. To him who led his people through the wilderness. To him who struck down great kings. And slew famous kings. Sion, king of the Amorites. And Og, king of Bashan. And gave their land as a heritage. Who remembered us in our lowly state. And rescued us from our enemies. Who gives food to all flesh. In the last verse. Who give thanks to the God of heaven. For his mercy endures forever. Now, that's kind of how it would have been like if we would have been back in Bible times and this was being done in the temple or if this was being done in the tabernacle and the priests would get up and they would say that first part and you would respond. And, and this is amazing because if you think about it, mercy, what, what is he talking about? Because, boy, you guys said that an awful lot through there. A lot of times you said, for his mercy endures forever. What in the world is he talking about? Well, mercy, and some of you guys, we've talked about this before, mercy is not getting what you deserve. In other words, we all deserve to pay for our own sins. We all deserve to go to hell because we have sinned. But mercy, God's mercy is he rescued us from that. But in this particular passage, the way that this is set up, this word mercy means loyal love. In other words, what it's saying is we are to give thanks because of God's loyal love to us, meaning he never stops loving us. And because of that, we can give him thanks. And so every time you said, for his mercy endures forever, you were saying, God, I'm thanking you because I know that your love lasts forever towards me. And that's something we can definitely give God thanks for. But there's a lot more in here. And I know we only have a little bit of time tonight, so I'm going to kind of fly through some of it. But we're going to talk about the first section. It's just the first three verses, and it says this. We'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We'll give thanks to the God of gods. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords. So what in there is God telling us we should be thankful to him for? Think about that. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. You want to know something, boys and girls? We have an amazing God. We have a God that is all-powerful, all-knowing. He is everywhere at one time. He can do things that we could never even dream of doing. And he's good. You see, there is nothing bad that can come from him. Because he is perfect. He is sinless. And everything is good. And that's something that we can be thankful for. We can also be very thankful that he is the God of gods. That he is the Lord of lords. The King of kings. It's interesting because... In the chapter before this, and we don't have time to get into it, 
But in the chapter before this, the author is talking about false idols. In other words, any God that people hold up that is not the one true God. And, and he calls out, and in fact, I'll even read it to you. It's Psalm 135, 15 through 18. It says, the idols of the nations, they're made of silver and gold, the work of man's hands. They have mouths. They can't speak. They have, excuse me, they have eyes. They cannot see. They have ears, but they do not hear, nor is there any breath in their mouth. And then he says, those who make them are like them. In other words, they're just kind of dead. They're not real. They're just made up. And yet, we see in Psalm 136, we can give thanks to God because he is real. He is alive. He is the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the King of kings, and he's good. And for that reason, we can give him thanks. Do you realize we can just say that? God, thank you for being good. God, thank you for being real and alive and caring and understanding and wanting to know about me. Those are things that we can thank God for, and that's what the author takes us to in this first part. Let me get to the second reason that we can give thanks. And let me read this to you, and I want you to think about this and see if you can figure out what the author of Psalm 136 is telling us we should be thanking God for, okay? Listen very carefully and see if you can pick it out. He says this, it's five verses, it's actually six verses. To him who alone does great wonders, to him who by wisdom made the heavens, to him who laid out the earth, above the waters, to him who made the great lights, the sun to rule by day, the moon and the stars to rule by night. What is he talking about there? Huh? Some of you got it. Some of you got it. You put it together. You took all the clues of those six verses and you got it. What is he talking about? The great wonders to him who alone does great wonders. Well, the great wonder that the author is talking about here is creation. It's God making the heavens and the earth. God making the lights in the sky, the sun, the moon, the stars. God spreading out the earth above the waters. It is talking about creation. How many times do you and I Tell God, thank you for creation. Thank you for making me. Thank you for all the wonderful things that you have created that really is a special gift to me. Do you realize that when we go through all the days of creation, he made all these different things in day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, the first part of day six, and then the second part of creation on day six was then he made man. Do you realize he made all of that other stuff first because it was for man? And then he put man over it? How awesome is that? That is something we can be thankful for. Maybe you think about something that's really special to you. Maybe it's a toy or maybe it's something else. Maybe God didn't actually come down here and form to make a truck or a you know, a video game or something like that, but he created the people and gave them the ideas to be able to do things like that. Those are things we can thank God for. How many times do you go outside or, or maybe some of you have gone on camping trips and you go into the forest or the mountains or to the lake or something like that and you just look at it and think, wow, this is really cool. Look at how tall those trees are, how beautiful that lake is. How many times do we stop and say, wow, God, thank you for creating that. That's a special gift to me. You see, the author is telling us we should. We should be thankful to God for his creation. Well, then we get to the next part. So we have, we can be thankful to God because he is good and he is alive and well. We can be thankful to God because of his creation and just his magnificence that he shows us in creation. 
But then we get to this next part, and it's a little bit longer, actually. It's quite a bit longer because it goes from verse 10 all the way down to verse 22. But he's describing something. Now, you, we have to remember who would he have been writing to? Because Psalms, the, this particular psalm would have been written a long, long time ago, and he was actually writing to the Jewish people. Now, we can learn from it, definitely, but he was writing to the Jewish people, and there was something that happened in their lives, well, their great, 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 great grandparents' lives that God is reminding them of, and he's saying, you can be thankful for this. See if you can pick it out. Are you ready? Listen carefully. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn, is a good clue, and brought out Israel from among them with a strong hand, with an outstretched arm. To him who divided the Red Sea in two and made Israel pass through the midst of it, but overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. To him who led people through the wilderness, to him who struck down great kings and slew famous kings, Sion, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and gave their land as a heritage, a heritage to Israel, his servant. All right. I know a lot of you know exactly what this author is talking about. Think about those clues. Think about the firstborn son dying. Think about the Red Sea parting, Israel going across it. Think about defeating kings and getting their land. What's he talking about? Well, he's talking about the Exodus. He's talking about when God rescued his people when they were slaves and servants in Egypt. And God rescued them. And he did it through Moses and brought the plagues onto the people of Egypt. And then Moses took them out of Egypt through the Red Sea after God had parted it. Then they were in the wilderness for a long time because of sin. And then Joshua came on the scene. Many of you have heard this because we've gone through these lessons. Joshua came on the scene, took them into the promised land. Remember, they went um, through the River Jordan because God parted that too. They get to the other side and they take out Jericho and then they go to Ai and they go to all these different places, defeat the kings, and God gives them the land. And that's what the author is talking about here. He says, we can be thankful to God because of his protection. Did he protect the Israelites in all of this? Absolutely. For his provision, God provided for them. We can thank God for delivering us, just like the Israelites would have. So this was written to them to remind them, don't forget. Don't forget that your great-great-great-grandfather or your uh, parents, or it could have been much longer, don't forget that God rescued them because he was protecting them. He was providing for them. He was delivering them. And then for you and I today, because we weren't part of that, we can think about how God does that for us, how God protects us from things, how God provides for us, how he delivers us. I think I've told you the story before when I think about God's protection so many times. And I was uh, one time I was driving down from Big Bear, and I, I believe some of you may have heard this story, but I was in a hurry because I wanted to get to Awana's, and so I'm hurrying down, and then I get behind a car that's going super, super slow, and I'm sitting behind them watching my watch going, come on, come on, you got to move, you got to move, I got to get to church, I got to get to church, and so I'm getting very impatient, I'm, I'm getting aggravated because they're going slow, and they won't pull over and let me go around them, and I'm just, ah, trying to get down quickly. Well, we get towards the bottom, and as we round a corner down there, there's a bad accident. And I was reminded that that could have been me. If I would have been the one flying down the mountain, I might have been part of that accident. And yet, could it be that maybe God put that slow person in front of me to keep me safe? See, I wasn't thinking that at the time. At all. There are so many times in our lives, boys and girls, that God protects us just like he did the children of Israel. 
where God rescues us from things, just like he did the children of Israel, and we can give him thanks for that. Lord, thank you that you keep me safe, that you protect me, that you deliver me, that you provide for me, just like you did the children of Israel. Well, we have, we can give thanks to God because he is good, because he is alive, and he wants to know about us. That's number one. Number two, we can thank God for his creation and, and just how creative and the wonderful gifts that he gives us. We can give thanks. Then we can give thanks to God because he does protect us. He does rescue us. He does take us and guide us. And he gives us provision along the way. Well, there's actually one more thing in here that he reminds us of, and it closes out the book or this chapter, and it's verses 23 to 26, and he says this, who remembered us in our lowly state and rescued us from our enemies, who gives food to all flesh. Now, those three verses right there, that's pretty rich. He is saying, God, you remembered us in our lowly state. Do you know that there were times in the Israelites' lives where they had been taken captive. I think of Babylon. Do you remember the story of Daniel? In fact, we, we went through the book of Daniel I think at the beginning of last year, or it might have been the year before. And so those of you that were in there, we, we heard it. But the nation of Babylon came in and wiped out Judah and took the best of their people, which Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were taken as captives, as slaves. And then they, they had to serve the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar at the time. And God did some amazing things in there, but eventually God rescued Israel from Babylon again. And I think that's what this is referring to. He said, God, you remembered us in our lowly state. When things were really bad, you remembered us and you rescued us. He said, you rescued us from our enemies. Well, let me ask you this question, boys and girls. Have you ever been in a tough situation where things weren't going right? Probably not being captive, uh, taken captive by another nation, but there's other things in our lives where we kind of think things aren't going so good. Maybe it's COVID. Maybe you've just been kind of getting down lately and thinking, is this ever going to end? And yet God provides things for us. He allows us to do awanas at least through this way. For those of you that go to church, you know, you're getting to, to see people at church now, and there's some other things. God still has not forgotten about us. So we can, we can be thanking God that he does remember us, just like the nation of Israel would have thanked God for rescuing them from Babylon or rescuing them from other situations, from Egypt. He says, you remembered us, God, when things weren't going so good, when we were feeling down and discouraged and depressed. You remembered us and you rescued us from that. And so we can give you thanks. As you guys get older, more things may happen to you and you can look and see how God has protected you, how he's rescued you, how he kind of lifted you up when you were feeling really down by putting people around you in your life. And that's what he's saying here. And then he also says, who gives food to all flesh? Let me ask you this question. When's the last time you went an entire day without eating because there was no food to eat? Has that ever happened to you? I know that there are some people that that may happen to. Most of us have never dealt with that. Maybe we've chosen to go a day without eating or we're sick and we don't want to eat. But for the most part, you know, we have been provided for. He says, who gives food to all flesh? And I think of even the animals. We have a lot of birds that love to eat fruit off of our trees. So they eat my plums or apples or things like that. It's not exactly what I want to give them, but they do take them. But you know what? God provides for them, too. God gives food to all flesh. See, he provides for us. We can give thanks. And sometimes... We do. We, we sit down before we eat a meal and we thank God. God, thank you for providing this for us. Thank you for this food. And might even say, and thank you for mom who made it. 
the dad who made it. But we need to pause and thank God, not just go through life assuming that eh, we deserve all of this good stuff. No. We are reminded that it is so important to thank God. And why? Every single verse reminds us that if nothing else, we thank God because his mercy, his loyal love, lasts forever. That is something we can be so thankful for because we know it will never run out. His love for us lasts forever. And we need to be thankful for that. Not just because Thanksgiving is coming up. That's something that we should be doing, boys and girls, every day. And thanking God for something. So here's what I want to do. I want to challenge you. This week, whenever you are going to pray, don't start your prayer out with, God, I need, or God, please help me, or God, please give me. But rather, every time you pray this week, you start out with, God, thank you for. And you can remember these patterns. Thank you because you're good. Thank you because you protect me, provide for me. Thank you, Lord, because you have created everything. And that's such a gift. Thank you because you rescue me. Thank you because you give me food. And that would be a great way for us to start all of our prayers is thanking God before we ever ask him for something. It would be a good place to be. Well, let's pray. And then I have a couple more things that I'll share with you before we finish up tonight. But let's pray. Lord, thank you for this passage. Thank you for your word. Thanks for all these boys and girls. And I know it's a tough time. It really is. It can be really hard to not have life be normal and go to school, and see our friends, and play sports, and come to Awanas, and play games, and all of those things, that can be really tough. But Lord, we can still thank you, because you are still in control. Thank you for the many good things that you do for us, and you give us, because you love us. Thank you that your love never ends. It lasts forever. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hopefully you guys are doing well. I know that some of you have had a hard time getting on your Zoom groups, or maybe you just kind of don't feel like it because you're already doing that for school, or it's just not the same. But I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to keep trying to do that because it's good to get on there and see some of the other kids and have a chance to be memorizing scripture. And so I want to encourage you to do that as much as you can and be a part of that. And we will be back together one day. And I can't wait because it will be so much fun to see all of your faces and to have fun at Awanas with you again. But until then, we'll keep doing this. Remember, next week, we will have our lesson and then we're going to take a week off for Thanksgiving. And hopefully that's a good time with your family as we approach that. Next week, we're going to look at part two of Thanksgiving and offering thanks to God. So have a great week. We'll talk to you again soon.